Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to talk about my fish cam. So I used to live in Florida and I was really interested in what was beneath the surface. I did a lot of fishing and everything and I lived in the Tampa area and there's a lot of opportunity to, to do basically underwater photography like I did it, which was, uh, and you'll, I'll explain. So what I ended up doing is I bought one of these cheap GoPro knockoff cameras from Amazon. I think uh, my first one I bought cost like 35, 40 bucks. And, um, and it comes with a waterproof case and everything, so that worked out really well. And um, initially, I would basically put this thing in its case, drop it down off of a bridge or whatever the case may be, and I would have a weight on the bottom to pull it down because it'll it's naturally buoyant, so you have to put weight to it. So I would tie like a two-ounce sinker to the bottom of this thing so it would drop it down. And as you can see on the video, right, the camera in this case was caught in the tide. It's not stable, and the camera gets basically moved around a lot. And so, I mean, at first I thought, oh, this is great. I can see more stuff, right? Because the camera's moving around. It's panning around, but it's completely out of control though, and it's really irritating. And so what I ended up doing is I built my fish cam, which is nothing more than this. I basically took the case that the, uh, whoops, that the GoPro came, come in, came in and I've attached it to some PVC piping. And, um, and so I put this PVC together and, and uh, basically I, I put the, the, the I, I've, I've mounted the GoPro or the, the GoPro knockoffs case to it. I had to put a little shim in here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but to basically hold it tight to the PVC piping. And I built this frame, as you can see, so it'll stay on, you know, it'll, it'll go on there. And to make it stable, this bottom, so I used uh, half inch PVC up here, and this is three quarter inch PVC down here. And uh, basically what I did is I took uh, little ball sinkers. I say little ball sinkers. These were, I think, uh, three-quarter ounce sinkers. And I basically stuck them in. So this whole skid along the bottom has sinkers in it. So it's, it's, it'll, it'll go and it's really stable in the water. As you can see on my video, it's completely changed how the camera works. And it stays pretty stable and I can drop it straight down. So... Um, what are some of the limitations on this thing, though? Um, so really, lighting is a critical issue. So you're dropping this down into the water. And if, the, if uh, you're relying on sunlight to illuminate your subjects as they swim by or whatever you're looking at. And so it, you need to have the sun needs to be up. You can't shoot this at sunset because there's not going to be enough light penetrating through the water depth of water is going to become an issue because the deeper you go, the less light you get. Um, now, so these cameras, like the first one I've got, I was using it off of uh, Skyway Bridge Pier. And the deepest water I ran into there was 20 feet. And I really didn't have a problem. Where I did run into a problem was if I took it up on Dunedin Causeway. And really it wasn't, the water wasn't near as deep there, but the water is had a lot of stuff going through it. There was a, a lot of... Uh, uh, particle uh, in, the, in the, a lot of particulate matter in the water, which kept the sun going from penetrating and you would, couldn't see very far either, so you would get a lot of green video, which is really frustrating. So, so the lighting is important. Um, and the, the other thing is um, whenever you drop this down, so nor and you can see I've kind of got, it's really a cheesy thing, the next, the next thing I needed to do was basically redo the rigging on this right but I've I basically tied the the rope to this so if if um, if the if the skids get stuck on something which is a good possibility that's why I'm using a cheap GoPro and I actually lost my first camera that's that's another issue I'll talk about in a minute but you're gonna drop this straight down and the way I've got this tied on is if it gets caught on something I can pull it and hopefully I'll break the skids off before I lose my camera but if I don't, it's thirty forty dollar camera. I can afford that. So, um, but having said that, it's better to drop this straight down. Now you'll see. Uh, actually, I'll post more video up on my on my channel about where I've used this. 
but you, you can you can drag it horizontally through the water. If you do that, though, that's risky, right? Because if you're dragging it through the water, you don't know if there's a fishing net down there, a tackle, or what's down there, and you could drag it into something, and I have done this before, and luckily I got it back out, but you might drag it into something and then not be able to get it back out. Um, so tides, tides are another thing. So if you're, if you're dropping this in fresh water and it's not in a river, you're probably going to be okay. It's not going to really cause any types of issues, right? But where I was dropping this down, especially the mouth of Tampa Bay, when the tide is moving, it's moving really, really fast. And literally, the way I lost my first camera, you can see that this snaps on, right? It, it snaps down to hold the camera in. And the tide was moving so hard that day, it literally popped that off and opened up and my camera floated away. And, and really, even if that hadn't happened, I wasn't going to get any video that day because the tide was moving so fast. I couldn't, get, it, was, it was pulling it, even with all the weight that I have on this, it was pulling it under, you know, back underneath the bridge or out or whatever. And so it was really not, not optimal. So if you're doing it in salt water, watch the tide. So um, whenever you get done shooting your video, so wherever you're shooting it at, there's going to be color issues. And it's really because when you drop, when, when, when basically sunlight, when it comes through the water, it's going to lose the red spectrum first. That's why you see a lot of these tropical fish and fish stores that are marine animals are red because they don't, that's part of their camouflage. There's, there's not a lot of red light as you drop through the depths. So anyway, whenever you are actually shooting your video, you're going to get this back out and you're going to have to do color correction with it. But it should look okay and, and yeah, it'll look okay. And keep in mind, the shallower the water that you go into, the better the light penetration. So, and you will find there are fish in a variety of different places or sea animals to look at, right? So if you go up near a pier or a bridge and you're up against the pylons or near the pylons, that's where animals will naturally congregate. So um, you, you will see animals in that area. And if you drop your camera in, like I've done several times, and you don't see anything, well, move to a different area, right? Because it's like... You might be out someplace where they're either at a different depth and you're down on the bottom or they're in a different location. They've gone in shallower water or whatever the case may be. You just need to move around. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to try building this thing, I mean, I basically just got all the parts from... Uh, from uh, Lowe's or Home Depot, right? doesn't matter. And you put it together. You just get PVC glue and you stick it together like Legos and glue it and you're good to go. So, and then the last piece you're going to put on are these caps after you put the weights inside the skids to hold it down. So anyway, thanks for joining me. Have a good day.